One of the interesting um, data sets from the IMW was about the use of uh, lenalidomide for um, maintenance treatment in smouldering myeloma. So perhaps I could just ask you, Paul, to comment on, on uh, Mary V. Mateos's abstract. Yeah, no, I think I'm, I'm glad you raised it, Gareth, because I think it's a very important paper. Uh, essentially what uh, Mary V. and uh, her colleagues uh, with the senior investigatorship of Hez of San Miguel did was to look at high-risk smouldering myeloma, an interesting mm -hmm. area because clearly right on that bridge of moving from asymptomatic to symptomatic disease. And um, they used a novel approach with lenalidomide, the convenience of, of lenalidomide as oral therapy. Um, they did use a relatively intensive steroid schedule um, uh, for the initial phase and then moved to more of, as you point out, this maintenance phase with lenalidomide as monotherapy. And I think it was very interesting, a randomized trial, um, and certainly no surprise to me at all that it was strikingly positive in favor of the treated arm. Uh, I think what was particularly interesting was to see the quality of responses improving with the single agent monotherapy um, and a high rate of CR being observed during that phase, which I think emphasizes the point that lenalidomide has this duality, that when you combine it with other drugs, it has this cytosidal effect. Um, but when you use it as a single agent, its true immunomodulatory properties come to the fore. So I, I'm, I'm struck by, by the data. So this is the first time that we see an agent being active in a pre-myelomatous sort of phase, pre or an asymptomatic phase. And I think it's compelling data. And so do you think that this is going to lead to it being used in the clinic? I think it may well do, because I think that the, the rationale for targeting smoldering disease early to me is very appealing, uh, especially high risk. Mm -hmm. And I personally, my personal bias in, in smoldering disease is that immunological targeting to me is one of the most appealing aspects of how to deal with it, because at least my concern with steroids in this setting is the potential for side effects. And I think that if you can move towards an agent that you might, for example, reasonably mm -hmm. either combine with a vaccine or integrate with even with monoclonal antibodies, you could actually rationally have an immunologically mediated approach to early disease heading it off at the pass. And I think that's a, a very compelling uh, concept. So what do you think, Antonio? Do you think in, in Europe where we face different challenges that, uh, that there's going to be a place for intervention in high-risk smoldering myeloma? Well, I, I believe that the, the, the study is quite interesting, uh, no mm. question, that uh, this study is showing uh, that with the use of glenalidomide in high-risk smoldering myeloma, you can uh, certainly delay the progression of to symptomatic myeloma. There are also some early data in uh, a slightly improvement in survival. I would like to be a little bit more conservative, and mm -hmm. I would like to see probably a little bit more data and eventually a clear cut a difference in terms of survival so, yeah, before but, translating yeah. in, uh, in, in clinical practice. I, I, I'm kind of uh, hooked on the overall survival benefit my, myself, but for a, a younger patient who's completely well with no bone disease, with high-risk smouldering myeloma, I think one of the compelling arguments is to stop them getting roti of some description. So bone pain, collapse vertebrae, so they can't use their boat, they can't go on holidays with their families. And so, I, I, for me at least, it, it's very, very interesting and is more or less prime time for that high-risk group, I think. Well, I agree, because I would use the analogy of, of other cancers where we use early intervention and where they clearly have translated over time into survival benefit. And I think there are many examples, primarily in the epithelial world, obviously. But, but I think to me that I, I do agree with you, Gareth. I think the other thing is that, you know, I, I'm impressed that, for example, you know, in my practice, I have a large number of smoldering patients. Significant proportion of them have osteopenia. I've been a strong advocate of early bisphosphonate yeah, use. Absolutely. And your own, your own trial has really validated that approach very nicely. And I think that we also have randomized trials in smoldering disease showing benefit in terms of time to first skeletal event. Yeah, absolutely. No. But they don't show necessarily the difference in progression-free survival that Mary V is showing so nicely in her trial. So my own construct is I can see myself in the future with high-risk smolderers employing periodic infusions of an amino bisphosphonate with an immunomodulatory approach, being very steroid sparing and, and minimizing side effects, 
and hopefully that translating into chronic clinical benefits. So I would hope for that, but I do, do agree with uh, uh, Antonio. Obviously, we mustn't jump the gun, but, but I'm with you, Gareth. I think it's a very compelling story. Yeah, I think it's, it's the way, way of, of the future, really. 